Now, a few years ago, I had the great privilege of being received in audience by His Holiness the Dalai Lama. And he had just said something in America to the effect that it was difficult for him to accord full respect to gay people. And I said to him, uh, well, Your Holiness, I feel in this situation, I have to tell you, I am gay. I have had a relationship of 41 years with a most wonderful person who actually comes from just down the road here. So I saw the family yesterday with young twins aged two uh, and the whole Netherlands family. I've lived in a Netherlands home for 41 years. A wonderful experience. They're very direct and in your face. They tell it as it is. Uh, but I said to him, Your Holiness, can you not find a way to be more kindly, because that is the message. And he said, I know, I know, I know. Uh, I have many supporters in America who are gay. They, they are strong supporters of me, but the problem is the text. The problem is the text. And I'm sure there are many wonderful religious leaders in this room who will be saying, maybe silently, the problem is the text. And so we have to think, how can we, who face this epidemic, help those who have the Dalai Lama's problem? And I think the answer to it is that we, we are learning over time that the text is often spoken in words of metaphors, of poetry. Take the passage in Genesis in the Abrahamic religions that says the world was created in seven days. There are some Protestant literalists in the United States who still say, well, that was it, seven days, Monday to Saturday, and then on the seventh day, God rested. But not many people now accept that, and most people now accept it was slightly more than seven days, take several million, million, billion days. Uh, and so the text is seen as a metaphor, a poem, and doubtless there are other passages in the Bible which are similarly passages of general instruction but not to be taken with absolute literalism. As a judge, I often sat in cases and, you know, there are lots of judges who will take it very literally. But often to get to the real purpose, you have to look at the context, at the purpose, at the general message that is being given. Uh, and it seems to me, with respect, that it, could not, it would not be a, a God that any of us accept who would deny to young children, Michel Sidibe's young children, the access to Navarapan for a dollar to save them being infected. That cannot be a spiritual faith or belief. And similarly, a God would not prevent young people learning how they can protect themselves by condoms, if necessary. It wouldn't have been a, a bold theological step to say, well, condoms are impermissible for promiscuous sex, but condoms are permissible for discordant couples, or condoms are permissible uh, if your objective in using them is to prevent the spread of uh, HIV. And similarly with gays, now that we know more about the science of human sexuality, that there is just this small percentage, about 4%, as, as, as Dr. Kinsey taught all those years ago, who are gay, uh, exclusively, to say to them, well, you can't have a loving relationship. You must be celibate, even though your inclination may not be to celibacy. You must be celibate all your life. Knowing what we do now about the painful uh, statement made yesterday by Pope Benedict, the difficulty for many ordinary people to live a celibate life, it is not a realistic message to give to ordinary, uh, fallible human beings. And so it doesn't seem likely to be a message of a kind and loving God. But these are the problems we have to address in this meeting. And at least we're all here and we're all respectful of each other. 
and we're all going to search for the solutions, the most important solutions will be things we can all agree on, like the Bangkok statement. I do urge you to look at that. It is a way to find a core belief, very similar to uh, Canon uh, Gideon's statement. And maybe like Pope Adrian VI, we can even perhaps give a glimpse of the future world where the rules of morality on sexuality will be framed around notions of non-violence, of mutual respect, of adult relationships, of kindness to each other, of love for each other. And the core message we've all got to take from Den Dolden and to work on whilst we're here is what Bishop Tutu said last night. Love. Love. Loving even those who don't agree with you. Loving those who have real problems about homosexuality. Loving those who don't quite understand it all. Loving those who are opposed to injecting drug use. Loving those who have contempt for sex workers. We have, we've got to find enough love in this room to find a way to find common ground, to state it and express it and to lift the stigma and shame so that we can help Michel Sidibe and his wonderful team of workers in the struggle against this enormous affliction of humankind.